Welcome back to Beyond Your Balance Sheet from the Sidoric Group of Steward Partners Global Advisory. I'm Laura Canoy. Beyond Your Balance Sheet examines those parts of our lives that contribute not just to our financial health, but also our overall well-being. The Sidora Group is sponsoring this conversation series as part of its wider goal to help clients achieve fulfilling lives. Now, as planners, they offer financial guidance and expertise, but they also recognize the importance of mind, body, heart, and soul. And so, in this episode, we're tackling a topic that many of us choose to avoid, insurance. While in any given year, we might make dozens of financial decisions around saving, spending, and investment, most of us take very little time thinking about how to protect those hard-won assets. For example, while the family home is by far the largest purchase most Americans will ever make, the federal government estimates that less than half of us have adequate insurance to cover the loss of a house and its contents. Today on Beyond Your Balance Sheet, we'll talk about homeowner coverage and other aspects of what's called personal lines insurance. Our guests are Todd O'Dowd, president of Avery Insurance, a fourth generation family owner of a boutique insurance agency writing business across the country with offices in New Hampshire and Louisiana. Welcome, Todd. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Laura. Pleasure to join you. And also with us is Casey Snyder, a certified financial planner, as well as partner and managing director at the Sidora Group of Steward Partners Global Advisory. Casey, a big welcome back. Thank you very much, Laura. Appreciate it. So, Casey, let's start off with you this spring out of the blue your family home and everything in it burned to the ground. Now, luckily, no one was home, no one was hurt, but it's a huge loss for you, Casey. When this happened, what did you expect your insurance to cover and what did it end up covering? Um, what did I expect it to cover? I'm not really quite sure in the moment. It was more like, I hope we're properly covered because in a moment like that, you kind of forget about all the prep or the due diligence that we did a while back. <clears throat> and I don't think we fully appreciated all the different elements of the policy and how they come together. So my immediate reaction was, wow, I hope we're properly insured. I think we are. Uh, and then come to find out within a couple of days after a number of discussions, we ended up having very comprehensive coverage. So what we ended up being covered for and I won't get into all the details, but was dwelling replacement, site structures like fences and sheds. Then you get into the personal belongings aspect of things. And then lastly, well, not lastly, but the rental, um, call it coverage or part of our, our, our policy. So those four big line items added up in a way where we felt like we were adequately, adequately insured and were grateful. Well, for sure, because anything can really happen. And toward your point, Casey, about adequate insurance, Todd, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, says that less than half of Americans are like Casey's family with adequate homeowner insurance. So what gaps do you see, Todd, in your line of work? Yeah, sure. And, and given kind of the more current between COVID and inflation issues, uh, I've heard the number to be almost some up to 60% underinsured. So um, it's kind of a staggering number when you think about, as you said, the investment we all put into our home. Um, and often it is a matter of people writing coverage at the time they might have done it, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, and not keeping up to really doing an annual review, which we really recommend people do on a regular basis to have those conversations about what is my insurance that I'm purchasing? What does it cover? What areas am I most concerned with? So an annual review, that's interesting, Todd. I think a lot of people might review their coverage when, uh, for example, a child is born or they move or their financial situation changes. But you're saying an annual review, even if life seems to be continuing on as usual. Yeah, it's really a good idea. Things change in people's lives that they don't even think um, about sometimes on the insurance side of it, whether it's, as you said, maybe a, a young child is all of a sudden driving a car now, changes drastically the liability situation. Maybe, you know, you had a great anniversary and you get a new ring 
that could change uh, what you're insuring, or you did an addition to your home and you didn't really think about calling. So that regular conversation um, and review just gives you an opportunity to catch up with your insurance expert and give them you know, guidance of what you're doing, what's changing your life, so they can best advise you on maybe some things you need to think about or address. Well, and what about inflation, Todd? Let's talk about that a little bit more. Um, Casey talked about how he was happy to find out that the contents of his home were insured. I'm guessing the dollar value of many of our assets has gone up without us even really thinking about it. Yeah, sure. That's changing, you know, regularly. And, you know, the big thing when you're selecting both an advisor to help you, you know, negotiate and purchase insurance, and ultimately the, the policy you buy, many policies do have some built-in enhancements like an inflation guard protection, uh, like a guaranteed replacement cost. Uh, those are key elements that are tend to be endorsements to a policy. So just you know, quickly buying a policy without thinking about it, you might be limiting yourself and you might not have some of those added protections that you really need in place. Oh, that's interesting. So Casey, how much has your family's tragedy led others around you? You know, your other family members, close friends, how much has what happened to you led others to say, wow, I think I need to take a look at my insurance? Very much so. Uh, and this has been part of our process professionally for a while in terms of advising clients that they take a look at their personal lines coverage to make sure that it's keeping up with inflation or their net worth, et cetera. There's a difference between advising somebody to do this versus having someone close to you witness a house burn down or have a family member or a friend. And as soon as it happened to us, we were getting calls or friends have told us that they went back and checked everything. So we've had, whether it be clients, family, friends, um, more people have checked or have talked to their agent as a result of our home experience uh, than I ever knew over the last couple of years. It's one of those, wow. it, it's sort of like, a, um, what was it? A recession is when your neighbor loses their job. A depression is when you lose your job. It's one thing to talk about this, to think about, yes, it can happen. But when you know somebody that it happens to, people are more apt to respond. Well, and Todd, what is behind this underinsurance of our homes that we've been talking about? What's the psychology behind that? Yeah, it's a it's a tough question. I think it differs from you know family to family, but I think at the core of it is still cost, right? So when people look at uh, where they're spending their dollar, and especially you know as groceries cost more, gas costs more, some of those things have an impact on a family. They look at well, I don't know this is going to ever happen. And so maybe they discount that side of the equation on the balance sheet of, you know, what's my cost to the insurance side versus what's the risk of it actually happening to me. And, and sometimes I think they make a decision based on really just the dollar amount instead of really kind of thinking about the overall picture of the what if and maybe those, you know, extra $50, $100, uh, would make a world of difference when it came time of something actually happening. Yeah, it's tough, isn't it, Todd? People don't like to spend money on something that they hope they'll never use. So how do you talk through that with your clients? Yeah, it's really about education. I think so many people are really intelligent about everything they do, whether they're, you know, what line of work they are, um, they think about a lot of things, but they don't necessarily think about insurance because it's not front of mind that it's going to happen. And right. so just educating them to the types of things that do actually happen that we see on a regular basis and being able to share stories. You know, I think as Casey alluded to, he's had more contact with different individuals. Uh, all of a sudden it really hits home when a, a friend or a relative or, you know, a business acquaintance has a loss like that people learn a lot more and really take it more seriously. And so education about the availability of different products, how you buy that, the things you should be concerned about and think about, and then weighing that against the dollars you're spending uh, to make that educated decision. What do you think, Casey? What's the psychology behind a lot of people being underinsured, especially when it comes to their personal items? Well, I mean, I, I, I think you both just 
touched on it, but it's the optimism bias, in my opinion. I mean, there's this, yes, we know it happens. Yes, it happens to others, but hopefully it doesn't happen to us. And to Todd's point with inflation and spending money in all these other areas, people don't really like to spend money on things that they hope don't happen, um, but they do. And when it does happen to someone close to you, all of a sudden there's that reality check of, okay, let's just double check this real quick. Um, but I think that's ultimately it. There's this, under, there's this underlying optimism bias about bad things happen to others. You know, the title of this series is Beyond Your Balance Sheet, but Casey, this is very much a balance sheet issue, right? I mean, you must talk about this with your clients, the way Todd talks with his clients. So what sorts of conversations do you have, Casey, with your clients about, you know, you might want to devote a little bit more of the balance sheet to protecting those assets? So we talk a lot about our clients make thousands, if not millions of decisions over their lifetime uh, in alignment with their goals. They work hard, they save, they invest, they make all these decisions in alignment with their values. And the irony here is what we're talking about with insurance is the preservation of all of that hard work. It's to be able to avoid a, a catastrophic event becoming a financial catastrophe. Um, and so that's what this, I, I, I think, is summed up with, is that, again, our process is meant to help people get from point A to point B. They work really hard to do so. And then there's this end sort of step or a step along the way. It's not that complicated. It's not that hard. But to Todd's point earlier about finding the right agent, the education of it all, we're talking about some simple steps here that help preserve all that everyone's worked so hard for. And I have to say, just having lived through this myself, there is a difference between discussing it and living it. And when you live it, having someone that you trust alongside you makes the world of difference because what, what, what we're talking about is one of life's most challenging circumstances. You lose everything, you're not really quite sure what to do. And having somebody by your side to be able to help you through the process, educate you about what needs to happen, and then ultimately, hopefully, make you whole because you did put in the time and effort in advance to make sure that you checked off all the boxes, it becomes more of an inconvenience than a more permanent setback. Right. I have a very close friend whose roof fell off of her house about seven or eight years ago, and it was not properly insured. And they're still kind of digging out from underneath that tragedy. Again, like you, Casey, luckily no one was hurt, but um, it can be an enormous financial setback. Todd, did you want to add some thoughts there to what Casey just said? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with him more. I think, um, you know, we get inundated by advertisements that, you know, have cute animals and tell you 15 minutes to think about this. Um, assets like this take a lot more than 15 minutes. It takes a conversation. It takes a thought process. Um, and within that, you know, the whole idea of having an advocate on your behalf at the time a loss happens is really critical step in that. Um, you know, you have type of loss that is so devastating that you lose everything you have. Starting over, um, insurance is never going to be able to replace you know those memories and the connection. Um, but it's a peace of mind knowing that there's some money behind you so that you take that off the table. And you can take the time to make the decisions you have to, to get your family, your life back in order. So Todd, we talked about one reason people might be underinsured is again, human nature, not wanting to spend money on something you hope you'll never use. What about Todd, distrust among some, some people of the insurance industry, you know, an image that insurance agents are, are just trying to sell them something. How do you work through that? Um, yeah, I, you know, it's an interesting piece where obviously I'm in the industry and I've been here for a fairly long time and generational. Uh, so I don't see that bias, but <laughs> but I understand that, um, you know, insurance is they have big buildings, they have TV ads everywhere that, you know, people might get that impression that, you know, it's a sales product. And I think that just goes back to, you know, how do you pick your wealth planner? How do you pick your attorney? How do you pick your CPA? Thinking about interviewing that, you know, professional and having trust and confidence in what their real goals are. And as a business owner, yes, everyone as a business owner, you're looking to 
uh, grow your business, increase revenue. But we always find the best way to do that is getting raving fans behind you and, and understanding that if you do right by the individuals you do business with, they're going to make your job of gaining new clients so much easier. And so you don't have to try to upsell a product. Um, it's not about that. It's about educating clients about here are the things out there because everyone's uh, comfort level of risk is different where we may have clients that are like, I don't want any risk at all. I want to ensure, you know, to the max and I want the lowest deductible possible because I don't want anything where we have other clients say, listen, I'm not that concerned about these small things. I just want the largest deductible I can and buy the highest maybe liability limit. And I'm not as concerned about my property. So it varies by individual and you really just have to find a risk specialist that wants to work with you and have those discussions so you can make an educated decision. So I'm guessing, Todd, you're not a fan of the proliferation of online uh, insurance products that we have now. There's a, a zillion of them. Yeah, and it's it's one of those that I think you only know what you know. And so you go online and you make a decision uh, and maybe the dollar amount looked okay. But when you dig down into it, policies at the end of the day are legal contracts. And in those legal contracts really define what's going to happen at that time of loss. And if you're not able to really decipher what all that language is, you're buying based on just a dollar. And those dollar amounts may not add up to what you really need at the time when you have a loss. You know, both of you don't need me to tell you the world is always changing and that affects the type of insurance that people might need. We already talked about inflation, but Todd, to you first, please, what factors are changing in our society right now that also might cause people to take another look at our insurance? Well, I mean, the largest thing is, is uh, you know, cyber related activity. So, you know, as through the pandemic and you had people all of a sudden working from home, doing a lot more of, of mix between work and business and um, use at their home, uh, you know, the ability for you to protect your own personal information became critical. And sometimes people, you know, didn't have the correct setups at home and people are, you know, clicking on the wrong fake email and all of a sudden losing personal private data. Um, and there is, you know, insurance on the commercial side has always been for a long, long time, but in personal, it can happen just as much. And uh, now there is products to protect on that side as well. Uh, we also see just rising liability. Um, you have larger attorney fees, larger uh, settlements. Uh, and so relying on, you know, that we mentioned earlier, a quick call and you go, oh, OK, I just bought, you know, $25,000 limits on my auto policy. That's not going to be enough when you get into a car accident. And so understanding that as awards go up in the court system, that has a direct impact of your risk factors when you get in your car every day and, and making sure you have a proper amount of liability to protect you. That's really interesting, um, especially what you say about cybersecurity, Todd. I myself am working from home, and when I was working in an office, you know, that was someone else's problem, insurance. Right. And now I need to think about that. So what about climate change, Todd? I think that's been affecting the insurance industry for a while now. Sure. That's a that's a very big issue on, you know, kind of that global stage where insurance company is a, is global, as we know, and, and rights business across the world. And the impact of having, you know, larger storm activity, uh, you take a case in point of a couple of years ago where you had major freeze ups costing the industry millions and millions of dollars in Texas. And Texas is not an area that typically you would think all the pipes are going to freeze. They're all going to burst and we're going to have, you know, totaled homes over a freeze. Um, but we're seeing more of that and certainly seeing more of the fire activity in California, Colorado. Um, and so all those things drive the insurance costs because every insurance company is also going out and buying reinsurance at some level. And in that, you know, those costs are going up. So we see as the, the climate 
change is going on and we see more severe type storms. Right now, Dallas is dealing with you know flash flood issues. Um, and so areas that used to not flood are all of a sudden seeing massive amounts of water and causing you know loss flood losses that people may not have bought flood insurance because they didn't think they were near a water area that would need flood insurance. So as the climate you know evolves and changes, the tends to be larger storm activity, more severe, and that's driving insurance costs. Wow. And lots and lots for you and the insurance industry to keep up with, for sure. Just a couple last questions for you both, gentlemen. And Casey, to you first, we could obviously talk for a long time about specifics, but what's one piece of advice that you'd like listeners to think about, uh, especially given your recent personal experience, Casey? I mean, I think Todd just touched on a lot of it in terms of the attention to detail. I mean, this is an educational process. And to think about all the different elements that go into a catastrophic event or trying to assure or insure a risk. Um, I will never forget my experience. And I was either going to never forget it because it was a lousy one and we were woefully underinsured or the details weren't there, or I'm going to remember it as a wonderful experience despite the event because we were insured properly and the little details are what matter. Um, and so I think the details, the educational process, keeping up with the evolution of risks, not just from an insurance perspective, but so too from a personal perspective as people's balance sheets change, uh, their lives change. To Todd's example earlier, there may be a ring that's part of a household or there's some wonderful event, but you also want to assure or insure against the, the, the events that we hope don't happen. So um, have the right team. Trust them, work with them, collaborate with them. Uh, and then it's it's much easier to have the peace of mind, I think, that we all crave. That's why we do this to begin with. You know, a central theme of this conversation series, Beyond Your Balance Sheet, is the emotional side of some of the financial and balance sheet decisions we make. So to you first, I think, Todd, what are the emotional consequences of suddenly having to make that call to the insurer and say, hey, guess what? What have you seen in your work, Todd, in your many years? Yeah, I think anytime you go through a loss, um, for most people, it's the first time ever, whether it's you know an auto or a home or what might happen. And that's a scary time because you haven't been through it. You don't know what to do. And I think Casey touched on it. If you've done the front end and you've partnered with someone that you trust and have confidence in, it's a fairly easy phone call. And, and it's a conversation of, oh, my goodness, you won't believe it. This happened. What do I do? Uh, and having someone on the other side of the line that's going to walk you through that process and going to be with you, you know, as you go and navigate that is just a critical element of it. So, you know, it's back to kind of the blocking and tackling, just making good decisions of who you want to partner with and then having regular conversations about that allows you to have peace of mind. And, and what we see, I mean, it's a traumatic event and no one really wants to go through it, but more often than not, claims go well. You know, these businesses, um, you know, insurance business would not continue to be in business if they didn't pay claims and go through that process. So while you sometimes will hear the negative, more often than not, we see always a very positive, you know, oftentimes, and I suffered, you know, nowhere near to Casey, but I had a massive water loss. Um, and in that, I ended up with a brand new kitchen. And who doesn't love a brand new kitchen, right? So while traumatic and you, it is disruptive to you, um, more often than not, you're getting new for old and the company is there to pay those claims on your behalf. And so being prepared can help dial back some of that uh, emotional intensity that for sure comes with these events. Casey, how about you? How would you describe the emotional aspects of this part of your balance sheet? The part that I've lost or the part that we're rebuilding? Or I guess in, in it's, I forget what was said earlier, but it was a matter of if you have the proper coverage, you don't have to worry about that aspect of that event. And so this has been a really trying four or five months, but the beauty of it is that we haven't had to worry about the insurance coverage in the background so that we can continue to be a parent, a spouse, you know, a partner at work. We can go about our lives in a way where it hasn't been completely disrupted. Um, again, it's more of an inconvenience 
uh, not one that we would have wished for, uh, but we've learned a lot. Um, others are learning a lot, I think, as a result of our experience uh, because of how they've reviewed and amended their own policies. Um, and to Todd's point also, I've had a wonderful claim experience. And all I've heard are horror stories for the better part of my career, because those are the ones that tend to get shared, maybe more so than others. But I've had a wonderful experience um, so far. It's not over, but I have, I have full confidence in those that we work with um, and pay attention to the details. It's, it's, it's the blocking and tackling. Well, I've certainly learned a lot. And I think I need to take take some more looks at what we have uh, in our own home and in our own lives. So thank you for that reminder. And thank you both for all the information for joining us today. That's it for this episode of Beyond Your Balance Sheet. I'd like to thank our guests, Todd O'Dowd and Casey Snyder. Thanks also to our engineer, RJ Perkins, and to the Sador Group of Steward Partners for sponsoring this series. I hope you enjoyed this conversation, and I hope you join us for the next episode of Beyond Your Balance Sheet. Keep your eyes on this website for more information. Thanks, everyone, for being here. I'm Laura Kanoy. Thank you, Laura. Thanks, Laura. Enjoyed it. <laughs>